What is up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to Muddy Wolf Studios. In this video we'll be going over power-ups. Now I've only got two types of power-ups in this game. I've built a freer as you can see on the left. Oh, on the left? What am I about? Here. Um, so you've got a little character, very simple, jumping, moving left and right. Um, if I pick up this, I gain more speed. You can see I'm a little faster and if I gain this, you can see I can jump even higher. So that is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at just basic adding power-ups to your games. You can distribute these around your game. You can even randomly spawn them. Um, but in this video, we're just going to be covering how you actually make the script for them. It's super simple and, um, well, let's get started. Okay, guys, so we're back in this scene. We have this very basic scene. It's literally just a platform with, so this ground piece here with a box collider 2D on it, a player, which is a triangle, because you know all best characters are triangles in life. Um, and he has a player script on it, which allows him to have a move speed, a jump force, and a rigid body 2D. We're gonna open up the player script really quick so you can see how this works. It's super simple. All I'm doing is getting a move speed. So for this power-ups to work, we need some public variables. Anything that you want to be able to um, change or make better so let's say if you have a gun and you want to make your gun shoot faster then you need to make sure the fire rate is a public variable on one of your scripts um, and then basically you create this so we've basically got our a public move speed because we want to be able to increase their move speed and we have public jump force which allows us to change the jump uh, we've got a reference to the rigid body here because uh, we're going to need that to for our movement um, MX is using the horizontal axis and then we're checking if the player presses jump and we call this jump here so in our fixed update we're just setting the velocity equal to our um, MX times by our move speed um, and then using the standard rigid body's velocity and then our jump speed is rigid body dot, or our jump uh, method is rigid body dot add force um, and then we'd create a new factor 2 with a force of nothing on the X and, well, jump force on the Y, <laughs> uh, which we set up here, which is 10. And then we're setting the force motor impulse. So that is what you need to know for that. The main things which, the most important part of this is that you've got some public variables you're going to be able to change um, further down when we get into the next scripts. Okay, so the... My unity was being weird. So the first thing we want to do is drag in a new shape. I'm going to drag in a circle. This is going to be my power up. And we're going to give it a different color. Let's give speed. Speed This reminds me of a yellowy flash, like the flash symbol sort of color. So we're going for that one there. We're going to put this on zero and probably minus 3.5. There you go. And let's add a circle collider 2D. I'm going to make this a trigger. You can do collision detection for this, but I prefer to use triggers for when it's a pickable up item, especially when it's just for the player. And if you don't want anything else to walk into it. Um, so if you want other things just to walk um, over it or through it, then that's what you want to do. Uh, so we've got our circle trigger. Let's rename this shape to be speed power up. And let's add a component called speed power up. And I'm going to create an add. And I'm going to open this up in Visual uh, Studio. Just going to remove these to start with and remove that. And we don't need the using tags up there, just Unity. Cool. So the next thing we need to do is create a public float. Um, so this will be the increase we're going to gain. Um, and I'm going to show you two ways how we could do the increase. You can have a static variable or like a random number. So every time you pick up the variable, you get a random increase. Um, so here we're just going to say public uh, float. We're going to call it increase. I'm going to set this equal to. Um, so what's this for speed? So we'll just say like 4F maybe 5f so it's just static so there's just a static thing we'll show, I'll show you the variable random increase in a minute um, so we've got the we've got a public float so we can change that in the inspector we then want to create the on trigger enter 2d and then we want to check if the collision has a tag equal to player so if it collides with our player we then want to say uh, we want to get get reference to the game object of player so we're going to say 
collision. Uh, we'll call it player is equal to collision dot game object, and then we're going to also get the player script. So we're going to call it the player script, and this is how we're going to access the jump and speed variables. And I'm just going to say here player. Oh, I'm going to say player dot get component. And in here, I'm just going to say player. And that's it. So this will get the player script. So we'll just go check if it's on there. So we're going to say if player script. And then we're just going to then basically say player script dot move speed is plus equal to the increase. So whatever the player speed is, we're just going to add on the five increase up here. So let's see if this works. So let's go back here, make sure this is all good and updated. So increase of five, let's hit play. I'm actually gonna unmaximize my screen. So if I just go right click up here, click unmaximize. I'm gonna click on the player and I'm gonna scroll down. So you can see the move speed is currently 10. If we move, you can see we move at a relatively slow speed. If we run over it, you can see this gets 10, then 20, and if we keep going over it, we get 25, 30, 35. But we don't want that. We want to be able, to, we want this to disappear once you collected it. So to do that, we just need to say, um, uh, what's it called? It's the, so destroy. And we're just going to destroy the game object, um, which will just destroy the item. So now, when we go back into this, and we just press play. When we move around, we pick it up. This time we can only grab it once, but we do get our speed increase. So now we can move around the world freely, which is very nice. Next thing we want to do is to do a jump one. So something different to get the jump. It's the same thing. So I'm going to duplicate this speed one, and I'm just going to rename it to jump power or jumo. What sort of move is that? Jump, and we're just going to remove the speed power up. I'm just going to remove component. We're going to add a new component and call this jump power up. And let's open that up in Unity. But first, I just want to click on the jump power up. I want to move it over a little and I want to give it a different color. We'll go for what's jump. To me, it's kind of like a cool blue. Yeah, that'll do. Kind of like jump powers. Uh, so let's save. Go over into our script. And essentially what we want to do is exactly what we did with the speed power up. So we just want to grab the contents of this, place it in here. The only difference is instead of move speed, we're going to say jump force increase. And we'll do it by five again. So if we go back to our game, I'm going to turn off maximize on play. I'm going to hit play. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to select the user so you can see the values change in the bottom right. So if we move and we click the speed, you can see over on the right here, the move speed has increased to 15 as we saw before. And now if we click this, you can see it's gone up to 20. So now we can jump even higher with one press of the keyboard. And I jumped off the map useful but you can see how that's increasing it which is great that's awesome but sometimes you kind of want to randomly spawn these in and get some um you want random values from it so what we're going to do is in the jump power up we're going to say we're going to change increase from being public to just a float and its value won't actually be a thing we're going to have two public um ones a min increase um and we're going to set that equal to five Oh, public float, min increase, sorry. And then a max increase, which is equal to 10. Um, and then we're gonna create a start method. I'm just gonna say increase is equal to random.range. And we're gonna say min increase and max, oh, max increase. And now if we go back, click on our player again, wait for it all to load. You can see, so we can see our value, our jump force there. So previously we had it going up directly in five this time when we get it, 
it went up by 20, well, it went up by 9 essentially. So now we should be able to jump even higher. So yeah, you can see we can jump up quite high. Okay guys, so we've gone through adding two different power-ups, a jump and a um, left and right. So they're the very basic simple ones. I'm going to be including these in my games going forward. And if I do any crazy ones like um, maybe some different types of ones, I try to think like maybe if you shoot fireballs, but sometimes you get a different status effect. So you pick a power up, which gives you an ice status effect, which slows the enemy, maybe one which gives you a fire one. I will do a video on that in the future when I actually build that into a game one day. It will happen, I promise. Um, so yeah, so different status effects. You can do loads of different things for these drops. You could do like one which might give you a bad one, one one, one might give you a good one. We could have like a completely random one um, and stuff like that. So that's stuff we can look forward into the future. If that's something you want to learn, then let me know in the comments below and I will add that in. For now, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new and hope you make some awesome games from this. Um, send me any screenshots you got of your games you're currently making over at my Twitter, which is at Tyler underscore Potts underscore and i'd be happy to give you some feedback so thanks for watching guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and peace out